There were some outstanding questions asked during the Q&A in my most recent free workshop, How to Level Up Your Food Photography Income, which if you missed that one, you should definitely go check it out. There was so much positive feedback. Folks really seemed to love it. So if you missed it, you want the replay linked down below. But there were some great questions that were asked that I was not able to get to, so I saved them and I wanna answer them here on YouTube today. So first question, and this was asked like in all sorts of forms and formats from a variety of different people. Is it better to charge for the full project for a food photography job as per dish or per recipe, per product, per image? What's the best way to package that? And I would say a very first place to start is go grab my free ebook, Four Steps to Booking Your First Gig, link down below. That gives like a good baseline understanding of how I price my services. But just to give you like a baseline rundown is I have a conversation with the prospective client understanding what it is that they're looking for the scope of their project. And then I go back and I kind of run the numbers coming up with like how much time it's going to take me, what kind of expenses this is going to require, any sort of maybe potential licensing this would include. And then I come up with a package price, like a bottom line price for that job. Now I can choose to present that to the client as here is the package price for all of these deliverables. Let's just say, for example, they've come to me and they want three videos. And so here's three videos for a price of just say arbitrarily $6,000, right? And so I can present that as a package price. But maybe I'm going to feel more confident communicating that to the client as a per video price. So instead of saying $6,000 for three videos, I can say, well, it's going to be $2,000 per video. And so if you're going to do three videos, then that's $6,000. And we can do the same thing with restaurant photography, right? So a restaurant comes to me, wants me to price out to do a job, and they say, you know, we want you to photograph 10 dishes. Well, okay, again, how long is that going to take me? Are there any expenses with that? I come up with that bottom line price and I can either again deliver that bottom line price or I can divide that price by the number of dishes and say here's the per dish price. So however you want to package it is completely up to you. What's most important is that you are accounting for all of your time, your expenses, and when applicable, licensing. But again, if you want to get kind of the basics and getting started, go get that ebook. I really, I lay it all out there. So question number two is, do you have your clients sign an agreement? Absolutely. 100% agreements are <laughs> so important to just the way that we do business with clients. If you don't know the details in terms of contracts or where to look for them, we actually have a really great kind of listing and information inside of our community. I will go ahead and link that down below and there is a post. So once you've joined the community, you'll be able to go straight to that post and it's got like a great listing there for you. It's a great resource. So next question is if a client doesn't come back, does that mean I messed up? Not necessarily. I mean, one of the things that I think is important that is like scary to do, but very important is following up with a client after we've delivered our images. Now, we also have to know that not every client is going to be like, oh my God, these are the most amazing photos ever. Like not everybody is like going to have that same sort of energy or way that they communicate. You also got to think about the fact that a lot of times when we're delivering images or videos or whatever to clients is they've got a lot of other things on their plate. Like you are not the most important important thing in their world at that moment. And potentially, if this is a part of a larger project, they may be in the middle of the project, even though you've just delivered the final work. I would not take that personally, but I always do take the opportunity to just check in a week or two later, like, hey, I wanted to check in, see if there was anything else I could do, any questions. And certainly, if you had any feedback for me, would love to talk about that. Feel free to let me know. I always want to be improving my services. 100% a very natural and normal thing to do. Now you do have to be ready to receive that feedback, but at the same time, wouldn't you rather know and then also be able to take those lessons learned, incorporate them into your business, and if there was something wrong, to do better next time or have the opportunity to fix it. Another question, and I get this question all the time, and I'm so happy I finally have an answer to it, is how do I even start approaching clients? Oh, such a great question. I have a dedicated one hour intensive thorough free workshop replay down below back from a couple months ago. You definitely enjoy that. It's got like some really tangible tools, templates, takeaways that you can implement today. David asked a great question. How important is it to have a website early on? And at what point should I make one? I would say, what's stopping you? Make it today, right? Like if you have this inkling of this idea, I will tell you when I built my first website, it was, I think I got it up in like half 
half a day. Now, was it perfect? No, but was it there and it got started? And was it something that then I continued to work on and update? And I still, I'm still updating my website all the time and refreshing my portfolio. So no time like the present. If you've had an inkling to do it, don't wait. I feel like a lot of times we're sitting here in our businesses waiting for a sign like, ah, here is the moment. Yes, now I create the website. Ah, yes, now I file my business paperwork to register my business officially. Oh yes, the heavens have parted and today is the day that I open up my business bank account. No, stop, stop waiting for signs. It's just like the inkling is the sign, so go do it. And along those same lines, do you need to have an LLC when you're just starting out and building a portfolio? Again, there's nothing stopping you. Like what's the harm of filing for that? Like maybe it might cost you a little bit of money and a little bit of paperwork, but there's no harm in starting it now because when you do get to the point where you start taking clients and you start receiving income from people, you're gonna wanna make sure you have all of those legal components in place. So don't like stall your future growth by saying, well, I'm gonna wait until it's clear that I should do that. Like there's no, there's no sign you're waiting for. Go do it today. This is a great question. I admittedly don't have a great answer for it. I mean, I can give you some general ideas, but Erica asked, how do you charge for a rush as in 48 to 72 hour turnaround time? I don't do rush jobs. <laughs> Usually my schedule is booked out like six to eight weeks out. So like if somebody comes to me and is like, I need something in 48 hours, I say, I'm sorry, I'm not your photographer. Now I know that's a luxury that not everybody has. And certainly when I was earlier on in my business, I would take stuff that I could turn around quicker. And so if you're in that position though, there is a premium that should be associated with those quicker turnarounds. In that case, if you are doing that, I would say, I don't know what the baseline average rate is for that. If anybody else knows, feel free like if you have an established rate because that's the other thing when we talk about established rates there is no standard when it comes to photography pricing for every example if you have these photographers doing this there's these photographers doing this you put you know 10 photographers into a room and they're all charging potentially different numbers different rates different ways so like whatever feels right to you. I think that's a really important part of the equation in general with pricing. Do you feel good about that? If somebody wants you to turn around something in 72 hours and you go, okay, that's going to cost you an extra $500 rush fee in order for me to be able to do that on such a quick turnaround, because yes, I can do it, but that's going to take some little extra effort and work. And so if you feel good about that, great do that. Go with your gut. Stop ignoring your gut. You got it for a reason. Carrie asks, is stop motion work still in demand? Oh my goodness, yes. I love doing stop motion work. I don't think it's going anywhere. I mean, we've been having stop motion work since, I mean, I was watching Claymation back in the day as a kid in the 80s, and it still continues to be relevant on social media platforms, on websites. It's playful. It's fun. It's unique. So if you love stop motion, 100% dive into that, get focused on that. Anshul asks, how do I get a standard contract or terms made? This is a great question. And I actually have a post inside of our free community. If you have not joined it before, we've got it linked down below. And then I will link the specific post inside the community where I've got a great list for you of all sorts of resources related to contracts and terms and kind of like more of the legal elements of your agreements with clients. And then Susanna asks, do you ask for the client's budget before sending a proposal? Yes, 100%. Ask them, do you have a budget for this project? It's not going to be a surprise to them that you're asking about money and that this is a part of the conversation because it helps you to know, like, are we going more budget on this or can we really like go top of the line? Do you want a Toyota or do you want a Mercedes? Like, where is this project going to land in terms of what I need to be aware of from the standpoint of creating an estimate for you? And you'll be surprised more clients than not will actually give you at least a range or at least an idea so again this makes your life so much easier so it is not rude it is not I mean maybe it feels awkward to you but it's not going to be weird or rude or problematic or sink your deal if you ask them do you have a budget for this project? So thank you so much to everybody who asked those questions and attended the free workshop. We have another one coming up soon if you wanna join us for that. Again, linked below. We got all the links below per usual. I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope you stay out of trouble and I'll see you soon, all right? Bye. Money, 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 money.